how do you get your contacts, business contacts, personal contacts, the people that you know to actually listen to your show? You'd think that would be easy. <laughs> it's not. Hello and welcome to another Podcast Pontifications with me, Evo Terra. Continuing the theme this week of making sure your podcast appeals to your avatar, no matter that avatar's experience with podcasting, today we're going to tackle contacts. Not the things you put in your eyes, but the people that you know. The people who you communicate with on a regular basis. If you're a business, this might be Rolodex. Okay, no one has Rolodex anymore, Evo. But we, we understand what that means, right? It's probably a newsletter that you have or some sort of a list of people who have said, yes, by all means, person of interest, I would love to hear from you and you have something wonderful to say. Now, keep in mind, I'm not talking about fans of your podcast. I'm not talking about listeners of your podcast. I'm talking about contacts, connections that you have, that you've already built, who aren't yet listening to your show. You want to make an announcement to these people. I also am not, in this episode, discussing how to build a really big contact list. That, that's, that's not what we're talking about here. This assumes you already have a group of people whom you are communicating with in some particular platform. You want them now to be aware of your show, this podcast that you have. So that's who we're going to talk about. Remember, of the contacts that you have, whether your list is 100 people, 10 people, or 100,000 people, the odds are that 75%, the vast majority of that list, hasn't the foggiest notion of how to listen to a podcast. They don't know about apps. They don't know about RSS feeds. They don't know about follow and subscribe and those sorts of things. 75% of your contacts that you want to listen to your show are not well-versed in podcasting. Just like yesterday when we talked about random people who hear about your show from word of mouth who also aren't into podcasting, I want to talk about your contacts in that mindset. You need to keep in mind that the people in your contact list, do not know how to listen. It, not that it should be hard, and not that they should know it. They don't know it. You're not there to educate them. You're there to make sure that they have a good experience, too. All right. There's really two things to keep in mind when you're thinking about your contact list, your customer database, your connections, whatever channel that you are talking to these people on. Two things you want to think about. Number one is make them feel special. That's number one. And number two, don't pollute the communication channel. And I'm going to talk about those in reverse, I've just decided. What do I mean by don't pollute the communication channel? Well, quite often when I'm working with my clients, they will have, since most of my clients are businesses, they will have a, an email list. And that can be of hundreds of people or in sometimes tens of thousands of people. Sometimes that, active, that list is very active. In, in, and what I mean by that is that the client of mine is sending information out to that list all the time. Well, not all the time, but on a regular basis, like, you know, weekly information gets sent out. Sometimes it's less active than that. But what I mean by polluting the channel, and we're just going to use email as an example, the same applies to social media channels. The same applies to text updates, if that's what you have. The same applies to physical mailers that you send to people's addresses, because that still happens. You don't want to pollute the channel with your message about something new. Right? People subscribe to your email list, or people follow you on Twitter, or people engage in the Discord server that you're in. Not because you're a podcaster. Remember, we're talking about the contacts and connections that you have that aren't yet listening to your show. And they're engaged in that channel for a very different reason. So if you just walk into that channel, even if you own that channel, like you would your email list or your own Twitter stream, and the only thing you did was subscribe 
new episode, subscribe, new episode, subscribe, new episode. That's polluting the channel. Especially with an email list. If you have a regular cadence, like let's say you send things weekly to your clients, breaking news in your industry, your clients and your prospects and even your competition, they subscribe to you for that. If you started sending out an email that also said, and by the way, I have a podcast, and you did that in addition to the weekly show you're already sent, the weekly email send you're already pushing out, that might pollute the channel. Consequently, or not consequently, conversely, on the other side of that, you don't want to bury this information. If you're already sending out a weekly newsletter to your contact list, don't just say, oh, by the way, I have a podcast at the bottom or the start of that email. That's not very special, which is the next thing we're going to talk about. But first off is do not pollute. You have to be cognizant that the people that you're talking to right now may not want to listen to your podcast. And in fact, once you do the math on this, and here's a harsh reality that I am really good at, most of them won't. I mean, reality is that. Ask your friends and family, tell your friends and family you've got a podcast, and you'll find a very few of those friends and family want to listen to your podcast. Now, clearly, if these are business contacts, then there's a greater likelihood that they might be interested in the information you share on your podcast, but not necessarily. So you can really only expect a single digit percentage of these people to check out your program anyhow. So don't get too terribly carried away. Another reason for don't worry about polluting your stream. Don't pollute. But let's get into the meat. What should we do? That was the first thing I mentioned. That is treat them special. Now, remember, these not yet listeners and maybe not ever listeners, but these not yet listeners are engaging with you in a separate communication channel that they prefer. If they don't want to get your emails, they would have already unsubscribed. If they don't care about the updates you send out on Twitter, they would have stopped following your account. These people are engaging with you there because they want to. And your job, when you talk to that group, that channel about your podcast, is make them feel special. Because if you're just dropping an ad into your newsletter, into your Discord server, into your mailing list that says, oh, by the way, I have a podcast, it's just an ad. It's just one more thing that they have to kind of filter through. So instead, make them feel special about taking this action. And the simplest way to do that, I think, would be to create a separate experience for that person or the people in that channel. Like instead of sending them to yourwebsite.com, send them to yourwebsite.com slash mailing list. It's a terrible name. Don't use that one. But And create a landing page that is for the people who are engaging with you on that channel. Let them know what it's in for, the, why they should listen. Now you may think that this is going to be the same thing as my homepage, Evo. Why would I do that? Well, it's, it's not. That's not what you need to be thinking about. You can talk to those people on that page in the same language you use in whatever channel it happens to be. Also, this only works once, twice, three times maybe. If you use Buffer or some other tool to shotgun your stuff across the web, don't, that's not what we're talking about here. This is not a big play across channels. This is a very highly specific, where are you engaging with these people? What can you say to these people in their own special custom group? Maybe it's a custom Twitter account. I don't know. But it has to be something that makes them feel special so that they want to try out the content. Don't just push them to your primary homepage. Make these people feel special and do not pollute. Because you want these people who are your contacts to become listeners of your show. That's your ultimate goal. Thinking through this is challenging and complicated, I know. So if you need some help with that, you want a pro in your back pocket, get in touch with me. Evo at podcastlaunch.pro reaches me. You can go to podcastlaunch.pro to see a list of the services that I offer my clients all around the world. And I shall be back tomorrow with yet another podcast pontifications. Cheers.